Hey there, friends, and welcome to another update on the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Tuesday, April 29th. Thanks for joining me. Gosh, it has been a long time since I've done a proper update on Kilauea. I think the last one was March 11th, and while I did do a... A uh, little chat about Kilauea with Mike Poland last week during a live stream. It's been a while since I did a proper update, so I thought I would uh, correct that today and let's, let's dive in and take a look at what Kilauea has been doing over the past week or so. I think it would be uh, not in our best interest to try to um, go over all the eruptive episodes that have happened over the last uh, five weeks or so, but let's just focus on what's happened with the most recent uh, eruptive episode there. You can see some of the glow there from the vents. There's a south vent here and the north vent there. Actually, that's, I think, the north vent. That's the south vent. We're looking to the south. Um, so magma is just near the surface here, as you can see on the webcam. We just had episode 18, which began on April 22nd and is now over. And we're waiting for the next eruptive, eruptive episode to begin. So let's go ahead and jump to the latest um, Kilauea update from the USGS. So this is from yesterday, Monday the 28th. Uh, the big news, I think, here is that we have... Um, inflation going on since episode 18 so we're we're setting the stage for the next eruptive event um, you can see here in the summit observations weak spatter was observed from the north vent uh, just before 650 yesterday but that doesn't you know the way they're kind of uh, defining an eruption is the the lava is being thrown out of the the immediate vent area uh, and spilling over uh, or being fountained. And so even though that magma is very close to the surface, they had to come up with some criteria to just uh, actually define an actual eruption there. But the glow continued to be observed from both, both the north and south vents uh, throughout the evening. Uh, coming down here to the analysis, um, the inflation signal has been um, showing since the end of episode 18, along with the glow from the north and the south. That suggests another episode is likely. Um, and so they're looking at sometime within the next one to five days for that next eruptive uh, episode to begin. Um, it might be helpful to go back to the timeline. This is certainly helpful for me as we keep adding more and more eruptions and episodes. It, it can be a little bit confusing in keeping track of things. But remember, this all began back on December 23rd of this past year. So they have a nice table here that summarizes the eruption episode number the date and time it started, the date and time that it ended, um, how long it lasted, and then how much time uh, went by until the next episode began. And so you can see here as we kind of scroll through the list uh, and get down here to the bottom, that if you look at maybe the last, um, maybe like 10 or more episodes, 10 or 11 episodes, the time between eruptive episodes has been anywhere from about five to nine days and so it's it seems to have settled into somewhat of a regular um occurrence with these eruptive episodes there the fire fountaining has varied a little bit we've seen some really high ones up to a uh, thousand feet or over 300 meters this last one episode 18 i believe had fountains up to about uh, 650 feet so um maybe about 300 or 200 meters or so somewhere uh, in that range. Let me make sure I got that number right. Um, yeah, about 200 meters, 650 feet. Okay, so there's a simple timeline. Uh, I wanted to show you some of the nice images that the USGS has collected over the past um, few weeks or so, mainly focusing again on episode 18. Uh, the big story is the, the accumulation of all the tephra. So on the downwind side of Kilauea, we've seen a, a pronounced accumulation of this the airborne material that is thrown out during the fountaining phase that cooled small uh, gas-rich pieces of lava that accumulate uh, on, on the landscape. And so you can see this is beyond the old, um, where the Hawaii Volcano Observatory used to be, uh, where the road ends there. You can see some of that tephra that's accumulated out there beyond the road. Uh, looking at some of the other photos here or maybe even let's just check out this nice video from episode 18 so this was uh, from the 22nd of April and this nicely shows uh, some of the fountaining that was going on with this helicopter overflight so you can see the the south vent there being the primary player 
with fountaining again going up to 200 meters or so 650 feet some lava overspill from the north vent down into the crater floor and then a closer look here down at the vents during this phase less fountaining here so this is possibly a little bit later or earlier uh, but you can see the lava pouring out of the vents and then starting to fill in the crater and again we're nowhere near getting to a point where i mean this crater is immense and so there is plenty of room for all this lava to accumulate and so uh, it's, again it's a great situation for people on the island and tourists because uh, it's very tourist friendly you can get a nice view of the eruption you can kind of see it all happening right there before your very eyes um and it's all fairly well contained so the hazards associated with this period of eruptions is quite low so a fountaining photo there uh some of the scientists grabbing samples at the distal end of the lava flow here this is um during episode 18 again and again these samples will be invaluable because they're going to be able to sample each episode each eruptive episode uh, look at those crystals and those crystals will have will done a good job of recording uh, their their history basically as they've moved through the magma conduit system we can interpret you know when they were maybe higher in the system when they were deeper when they were coated uh, with lava as well as just the chemistry itself um, so some nice views there of the fountains from uh, episode 18 and uh, this I think was just a video of from April 20th so just before the eruption really got going this is some like what they're calling low level precursory activity so basically some lava just kind of bubbling uh, from the crater but not really going very far so not the the true onset you can see it actually at some point here drained down uh, again just almost like gas pistoning behavior uh, associated with the amount of gases dissolved in that magma which makes it rise or fall depending on how much gas we have and uh, the buoyancy of the magma. So some nice uh, images from episode 18. Uh, another one here, since we've talked recently on the, the channel about interferograms, there's a nice one here. This uh, two passes, April 9th and April 17th over Kilauea. And this was in between episode 17 and 18. So you can see uh, some of those colored fringes there indicative of inflation. So this is the the ground actually rising in between uh, eruptions as it's recharging and fresh magma is with its gases is causing the ground to actually bulge and rise a little bit so they were able to track that change with some nice insar data and then they've also been using um drones to capture images over the vents uh, and so this is a particularly cool image here looking straight down into the south vent this is from april 18th so this is just before uh, episode 18 got going um, and you can see you know when we see the glow on those webcams and we talk about the magma being just below the surface um, here's a, a down vertical view of exactly what's going on you can see some of the lava kind of spattering but none of this lava is actually making it out of this pit or this vent it's all it's all confined within the vent and they estimate that it's uh, that magma is down there uh, several tens of meters or yards down so it's um you know it's down there deep enough that it actually can't clear the vent at least at this point and eventually obviously it, it was more magma and more gas in the system that drove that magma out once episode 18 began um, looking at the monitoring data over the past month, um, we can look at earthquakes here, uh, and the earthquakes are pretty typical, uh, very background, low-level earthquake activity happening at Kilauea over the past month. So here's the summit area here, not a lot of earthquakes in that area for the month. These earthquakes here um, along the south flank are related to the whole south side of Kilauea just slowly sort of sliding and slipping towards the ocean um, as it's unsupported on this side. And those have been happening for literally uh, decades, if not longer. And then these are the more deep-seated earthquakes associated with uh, the hotspot near Pahala. So as the, the magma's coming up and then moving into some conduit that feeds Kilauea, some of this may also be going over to Mauna Loa. But those are earthquakes, very deep earthquakes related to that. Um, looking at sort of a cross section across that map, you can see the deep Bahala earthquakes and then these shallower ones here out across Kilauea. 
If we just look at earthquake counts per month, we can see that, again, background levels, you know, anywhere from uh, 20 or so earthquakes per day up to maybe 50 with a few few anomalies here or there. But basically, you know, probably an average of about 30 to 35 or so earthquakes per day across the region. And then a plot of the earthquakes per day uh, and their, their location with respect to depth. So you can see the shallower quakes uh, and then those deeper Pahala quakes that are down about 30 kilometers or so in the subsurface. Um, deformation data has been the most interesting and helpful uh, tool in terms of forecasting when the next episode might begin. So here we have the tilt meters and the blue line here is the one up near the summit that's the most helpful. So you can see it starts from March 31st, goes up to today, and you can see these upward trends in the blue line, that's inflation, that's the ground rising because magma is uh, pressurizing. And then when it starts to drop, that's the onset of that eruption. So here we have episode 16 uh, erupting and then ending and then inflation resuming up to some point. And then here's episode 17 beginning and ending around April 8th to 9th, it looks like. Uh, and then we had it rising again up till we got to April 22nd when we had episode 18 begin um, and then it ended after a short period of time. You can see it dropped pretty quickly there. And then we've been in this inflationary trend since then. So what we're looking for here is, you know, what, what will be the critical threshold in terms of tilt needed uh, before we get to the next eruptive phase. And if you look at episodes 16 and 18, they uh, reached almost exactly the same level, just a little bit over six microradians. But episode 17 was a little bit lower, around two, and we're already well past that amount of tilt currently. And so probably any time, you know, in the next day to two or three days, I guess on the update, they said one to five days, but they continue to kind of refine that as they get more data. Uh, and so the, the tilt meters are the definitely the thing to watch moving forward that's helpful in terms of forecasting when those eruptions might take place. Um, so as we mentioned, the only real hazards associated with these volcano, volcanic eruptions, uh, the lava is confined to the, the, the crater. There's not a lot of earthquake activity because we've established a very uh, efficient conduit from the magma storage zone up through the vent. And so the real hazard uh, at this point is just VOG and those volcanic gases. And here you can see a current uh, image showing the way the winds are looking on the big island for today. So you can see these uh, moderate offshore winds coming out of the southeast, uh, but then being deflected around the island in its uh, lofty topography. And within the island itself, you can see there's very, very light winds. So there's not a lot of uh, air movement in the interior of the island. It's mainly just along the coast there. And so that dictates to some degree how the volcanic gases are dispersed around the island. So if we go to the map showing VOG, and this just is uh, a forecast over the next day or two, you can see it coming out of Kilauea, and mainly just sort of swirling around the island. For the most part, it's not drifting too far, but it is impacting some of the communities around on the big island. Occasionally, some of this gas gets over to Maui and some of the other islands as well. Um, but it looks like for the next day or so, it'll mainly be a big island issue in terms of those um, sulfur dioxide concentrations. So that's our uh, update so far for uh, Kilauea. And so we will continue to monitor the situation. I think a good summary would be that there's a clear, and in talking to Mike Poland, it was very helpful to get his perspective on this as well. We have a, a clear pathway and conduit from the magma storage system to these two adjoining vents. Um, and so when will that change? We'll have to kind of wait and see and see how this evolves. It could be uh, a moderate earthquake somewhere nearby that changes the, the plumbing system. It could be changes in the influx of magma from depth. There's an, any number of factors that could tip this thing one way or another and change the behavior and the pattern that we're seeing right now. Or it's possible that this sort of pattern uh, goes on for quite some time. But as Mike pointed out in the live stream, this is kind of a special phase because we don't often see these types of fountains at Kilauea. There was a Kilauea Iki in 1959 that only lasted a month or so. 
We had Mauna Ulu in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, and then at Pu'uo'o in the 80s, we had some of this fountaining, but that was a, at a very distant location. And so this might be, you know, one of the more accessible uh, eruptions to visit. So if you happen to be out there or are traveling there, just enjoy it. It's it's fantastic. And the fact that these are occurring on average once every week or so um, with some level of regularity makes it uh, even even better in terms of actually having a good chance of seeing things. So I'll continue to monitor this and share with you as best I can. Um, I will try to put together these Kilaway updates on a bit more regular basis than I have been. So I apologize for the, the little bit of a gap there, but thanks for joining me. Thanks for your support of the channel and we'll see you next time. Take care.